Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 9 for April the 26th, 2020. We're still in Unit 2 entitled God Promises a Just Kingdom. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is what goes around comes around. Our devotional reading is taken from uh, Isaiah chapter 42 uh, verses 1 through 9. We'll come back and talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, our background scripture is taken from Isaiah chapter 61 uh, verse 8 through the uh, 62nd chapter of Isaiah verse 12. And our print passage today is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verses 8 through 11 and then um, Isaiah chapter 62 uh, verses 2 through 4a. Our key verse reads, For I the Lord love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing, and in my faithfulness I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. That's taken from Isaiah chapter 61 uh, verse 8. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explicate the hope of vindication for the righteous and faithful. Secondly, to long for salvation and restoration for God's people. And thirdly, to commit to making just decisions in everyday life. We have three outlines today uh, that will be a focus of our lesson today. The first outline is entitled Promised Justice. Second outline is entitled Praise for Justice. And then thirdly um, is um, promised transformation. And so we certainly thank and praise God for yet another opportunity to continue to keep our focus on the word of God and his promises. And we certainly hope and pray that you are continuing to be prayerful in this difficult time that we, uh, that the whole world is facing. Um, and we hope that you're continuing to follow the uh, the wise counsel of uh, of uh, those officials who uh, are admonishing us to take care of ourselves, take care of our families, to uh, do the right thing uh, in terms of social distancing and these types of things that will uh, help us in our recovery. Uh, and we certainly want to make sure that we believe what God has told us uh, in, in his word in spite of uh, our circumstances. We have quite a bit to cover today. We want to uh, go back to the beginning of our lesson today as we deal with this topic of uh, what goes around comes around. You, you, I'm sure you are familiar with that term. Uh, but it is not biblical. Uh, but what is biblical, uh, we won't have an opportunity to go there today because we want to focus on these three outlines. But I want you to take a look at Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 7. Uh, and also I want you to take a look at um, uh, Romans chapter 2, uh, verses 4 through 6. But all of that second chapter of Romans is good in terms of highlighting uh, the focus of our discussion today. So grab your Bible and some study material, uh, something that you can take some notes. And we want to be able to encourage you today uh, from the Word of God. And uh, we took uh, a bit of a break in our lessons uh, focusing on uh, the southern kingdom of Judah uh, that goes back to uh, I believe lesson six uh, and actually our devotional reading uh, for this lesson uh, is taken from Isaiah chapter 42 verses 1 through 9 and that was our lesson um, back on April the 5th so we may touch on just a few points from there uh, because it is relevant to uh, dealing with uh, the prophet Isaiah dealing with uh, the so-called books of comfort uh, as we shared with you earlier 
from the 42nd chapter, but actually the Book of Comfort goes back to the 40th chapter of the Book of Isaiah and extends to the 66th chapter of, of the Book of Isaiah. And so these books of comfort or chapters of comfort, if you will, they look forward about a century and a half to the time when Judah's exile in Babylon uh, is about to end. So we need to keep in mind that uh, the exile did not uh, begin until uh, 586 BC. So we want to keep those things in mind as we look at this lesson today uh, from uh, Isaiah chapter 61. There's a lot going on uh, in the 61st chapter and we want to be able to touch on that and then we're going to look at a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson but we want to be able to note uh, in the 61st chapter of the book of Isaiah there's essentially two advents that we want to make sure that we understand um, dealing with this lesson uh, so we can understand where um, uh, the prophet is speaking and how in-depth um, the Spirit of God was using uh, Isaiah to prophesy uh, to Israel or respectively to Judah to the southern kingdom but when we look at the 61st chapter of the book of Isaiah uh, you might re remember this uh, passage but it says the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me uh, to preach good tidings to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives uh, to the opening of the prison to those who are bound uh, verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord uh, and the day of vengeance of our God but in that second verse um, of the 61st chapter uh, the verse 2a is speaks to that first advent looks to the initial coming and the proclamation of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ but that uh, verse 2b uh, deals it, it says in the day of vengeance of our God that um, deals with the second advent and we want to make sure we want to understand that because when we look at uh, the book of Isaiah uh, the 61st chapter uh, and you might recall when Jesus was uh, uh, speaking in Luke chapter 4 uh, verses 18 through 20 he halts at this uh, uh, 61st chapter uh, verse 2b because there is an advent split uh, so um, that is essentially why Jesus did not uh, recount it in Luke chapter 4 because it spoke to a different time period and so we are in uh, uh, the second advent uh, of uh, application of our lesson today uh, uh, but having said that uh, God still wanted his people to look forward to uh, the promises that he had made to them and so as we look at this lesson today uh, we are uh, essentially talking about uh, what what we expect uh, Christ to do at his second advent uh, and salvation is relevant uh, to both advents uh, because we we want to be able to understand that God was speaking to uh, Judah particularly to Israel but he is also speaking to the Gentiles and one of the things that we want to make sure that we understand and that we are looking for uh, in the second advent is for uh, Christ to set things in order uh, or to vindicate uh, the righteous if you will but I want to deviate just a little bit and I want to go over to Psalm 24. I was you know, meditating on this lesson this morning uh, and the Spirit of the Lord reminded me of something this morning that I want to share with you and, and I believe that we will be able to understand 
how this fits uh, into our lesson today and how it fits into the message that uh, God was sharing with his people and it's something that through the ages uh, uh, God was uh, continuously even through the prophets trying to uh, uh, alert Judah respectively to what he was saying to them but if you would turn your Bibles very quickly and then we're going to get right into this lesson outline to Psalm 24 uh, verse 1 and 2 and you'll recall this passage the Bible says this is a Psalm of David the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and those who dwell therein verse 2 for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters why am I sharing that with you uh, the people of God Judah in our lesson text today whether we are speaking about them or Gentiles we belong to God uh, we are his people uh, the Israelites if you go back to uh, Exodus chapter 3 when God decided to bring these people out of bondage uh, they entered into a relationship with him into a covenant with him and one of the things that uh, I find interesting uh, as we deal with with Judah now that we're back dealing with principles that God was still sharing with them while they were in captivity is that they were always God's property they were God's possession they he redeemed them uh, and so uh, I just want to remind you uh, as we look at this lesson today and as we look at what is happening around us and as we look at uh, what we expect God to do he was always moving his people around um, the Israelite you can trace their journey throughout the Canaanite land into the wilderness into the promised land and so on and so forth but we are nothing but passengers in God's car uh, we are along for the ride if you will God is bringing us to the place where he wants us to be and so through faith we will arrive there and this is something that Judah needed to understand about God he was bringing them uh, or he allowed things to happen uh, to them and through them and with them to bring them to the place and 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 even though uh, they have gone into captivity under Babylonian uh, 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 rule and reign they are essentially looking forward to coming out of that captivity uh, uh, through the prophets message but they haven't arrived at the place that God wants them to be and salvation as we look at these advents in Isaiah chapter 61 they were brought to the message or to the prom the promise of Messiah the anointed one they were brought to the finished work of the cross they were brought there uh, through the messages that God wanted them to have so they could look to salvation and now as we uh, uh, exchange if you will advents and now that we're looking for the uh, 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 into the second advent God does not want his people to forget that he will fulfill the promises that he have made to them and, and, and even as we look uh, uh, to the promises that God have uh, made uh, 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 to us as believers we look to those promises through the lens of salvation salvation is the only means that God has uh, divinely orchestrated to be uh, a remedy for the penalty and the power of sin I want you to remember that and salvation as we can look at the Lord shaping us and bringing us into more of his truths and more into a better conduct uh, in our fellowship with him and with our fellow man we can uh, uh, understand better that God is bringing us 
into a place in his love for us and then that love is to be transmitted to our fellow man I hope that you can understand that and I know it's a little lengthy but but the the, the lesson is uh, giving us to understand what goes around comes around and so if we are going to uh, uh, love one another or we're going to love God we should be able to reap from that but if we are not going to obey God and we're not going to reap uh, from his loving kindness through the cross through Jesus Christ we are also going to reap what we have sown if you will and so it goes both ways uh, rather we are people of God uh, whether or not and, and so those scriptures that I gave you in Galatians chapter 6 and Romans chapter 2 will help uh, shape our understanding around this but I want to get very quickly now into the biblical context and when we will get into our outlines but Isaiah prophesied in Judah over a period of 40 years from 740 to 700 BC he ministered uh, during the reigns of the Judean kings, Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. So tradition holds that he was killed during the reign of Manasseh by being sawed in half with a wooden saw. Uh, the major audience of Isaiah's uh, prophetic messages uh, was the southern kingdom of Judah. He condemned their ritualistic worship and idolatry. So I d Isaiah predicted uh, Judah's Babylonian captivity and their subsequent deliverance under the Persian uh, King Cyrus. So we want to make sure that we understand uh, uh, what God is looking for and he has every right as I shared with you earlier from Psalm 24. If we belong to God and he has redeemed us then he has set the table for how uh, uh, our conduct uh, is to be administered uh, certainly to uh, one another but the first outline is entitled promise justice and this is taken from Isaiah uh, uh, chapter 61 verses 8 and 9 verse 8 for I the Lord love judgment I hate robbery for burnt offerings and I, and I will direct their heart in truth and I will make an everlasting covenant with them Verse 9, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them uh, shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. So let's unpack this a little bit and talk about what the Lord is expecting. Uh, when we talk about the word judgment, we don't have time to get into the different languages uh, so we can better understand uh, uh, how this is shaped but when we talk about judgment uh, most cases in uh, biblical language we're thinking about uh, a condemnation uh, but in this case uh, this judgment should be uh, uh, interpreted as justice God is looking uh, for justice and he hates robbery uh, not the quote-unquote uh, a robbery that we think about but all wrongdoing uh, and if we look into the historical account and sometimes uh, in this ritual that that Israel had perpetrated over the years of worshiping God uh, they didn't bring the required sacrifices they brought blemished sacrifices before God and God was not uh, uh, pleased with that and so uh, he hated this kind of activity, activity, uh, this kind of wrongdoing that 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 is associated with bringing the wrong offering. So what we're saying to you today, uh, uh, but God hates the the worship uh, that we try to render to Him that is not founded in truth and that is not founded in love. But I kept looking at this word. Uh, justice uh, and we should understand that that what God is looking for is for things to be uh, made right uh, justice uh, essentially is a relational term uh, involving God uh, and one another in other words our love for God and our 
uh, love for one another. And then this, this justice spills out into the created order, how we handle and how we treat the things uh, to pertaining to God and to creation. So it has a broad spectrum of understanding of, of uh, even as we, if we were look at the uh, Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, it, it, it is uh, principally founded in our relationship or Israel's relationship with God. And then there is a, 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 a distribution of how uh, the Israelites or the Hebrews were supposed to treat their fellow man. So uh, God is looking at not only our activity with him, but he is looking at our activity with one another. And so we want to make sure that, uh, and I, I've said this for years, and as we continue to talk about salvation, 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 what that means, it puts us back in the created order it puts us back into the position uh, that God wanted us to be in and, and, and so what salvation does for us uh, it doesn't mean that we're quote unquote better than anybody but it means that we are a better quality of individual because we are saved because now we are recognizing better how to respond to God in a worshipful way that is pleasing to him uh, and, and it is it's also uh, exemplifies those characteristics uh, uh, among us as brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and, you know, as we look today and we see signs up everywhere how uh, uh, certain live, black lives matter and all of these kinds of things. And I don't have a problem with those. We should be reminded. But how are we going to internalize that? How are we going to actually implement those things? How are we going to actually be empowered to do those things without God being involved? And so it's important to understand, I believe in the 15th chapter of the book of John, verse 6, Jesus said these words, apart from me, ye can do nothing. So what God is expecting out of us actually comes through him uh, and by him and unction by him so we need to be empowered to love one another without that salvation uh, peace in our lives without that recognition of the finished work of of Christ uh, at Calvary we will miss the mark we will not be able to conduct ourselves uh, in, a, in and of ourselves without God's handiwork and I hope that you can understand that so the message uh, uh, that 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 we want to send to the world today is that as uh, God sits on the throne, He is requiring that all men repent of their sins, to come to Him, to be transformed. Look at the historical account here of Judah. They have not been able to keep the commandments of the of the Mosaic law. They have not been able to fulfill the requirements that God uh, uh, set down and laid down for them through commandments and ordinances and statutes. They have conducted themselves in such a way without the uh, uh, measure of God's law in their hearts that they have found themselves in captivity for 70 years under Babylonian rule and so this is an example for us today that if we follow the same pattern as Judah we will get the same results first Corinthians chapter 10 will illustrate that for us but I hope that we will understand that we need God and he says he loves judgment uh, or in the NIV it says he loves justice he hates robbery and wrongdoing and it goes on to say in my faithfulness I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them so what God is saying here is he's going to get involved he is already involved he's going to do something that uh, we can't do he's going to uh, quicken us he's going to save us he's going to deliver us and that was the message at the first advent uh, in the 61st chapter of the book of Isaiah uh, Isaiah was prophesying here that that this anointing on Christ 
was going to be able to deliver individuals from the domain of darkness. We were prisoners in sin, held captive under the sway of the enemy, but we were delivered through Jesus Christ because we believe the testimony, we heard the word of truth, we believe the message, and, and we were able to call on the name of the Lord, and then we were able to be saved. And so uh, uh, that being said, now we are able to exemplify the characteristics of Christ, not only uh, uh, just to God, but also <clears throat> excuse me, to our fellow man so the Lord is saying here I'm going to be involved in this these are my people I'm going to make a covenant but I like what it goes on to say in verse 9 their descendants uh, will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples all who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. How do we know it, that you are blessed by the Lord? Is it simply by the things that you have or is it by the power of Christ's love moving in your hearts that you are not a detriment to society anymore but you are actually an asset? So we want to keep those things in mind but uh, God, uh, the blessings will be the result of God's decision to restore justice he loved while removing injustice and robbery uh, that he hated. So robbery refers to holding back and not presenting the best in their burnt offerings. And this is the practice that uh, Judah had or Israel had uh, at the time. They, 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 they were just going through the motions. There was uh, no transformation uh, in their hearts and this is what we have to look for today in society uh, we understand that 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 we matter but w without Christ's love in our hearts we will continue to assault one another we will continue to let our emotions if you will get the better of us and we will take advantage of one another even to the tune of taking one another's lives and so we have to understand that Christ is essential for all of humanity humanity and for our communities uh, it's, it's interesting to note that when God delivered uh, uh, Israel from Egyptian bondage he immediately started giving them laws and commandments and governing principles how they were supposed to conduct themselves amongst one another and, and so uh, without that uh, a governing principle without that reverence to God and to Christ and to the cross and to the resurrection and to the Holy Spirit who quickens us and uh, enables us to do the things that uh, that are pleasing to God we will not be able to do that and this is why uh, uh, Judah and, and Israel respectively have uh, have gone into captivity. Israel went into captivity under the Assyrian campaign and Judah respectively went into Babylonian captivity. So all of this war and all of this uh, uh, captivity because they did not internalize the Mosaic law. And so I hope that we are able to understand this today. So God is requiring that we uh, not just be saved but that we uh, uh, act the part and that we live the part uh, even as we look into the future for Christ's return. But the question is as salvation identifies believers as blessed and unique. How can we visibly demonstrate this in a world characterized by injustice? I want you to look at Matthew chapter 5. Uh, look at that sermon on the mount and pay attention that we, uh, 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 that we are the salt of the earth we are supposed to be able to as saved people uh, experiencing and enduring salvation through the cross we're supposed to be people who uh, uh, add salt to uh, 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 the land we're supposed to be able to to uh, 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 exemplify the characteristics of Christ we're able should be able now to put love in the place of hatred we should be able to put a uh, 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 meekness and kindness in the in the place of 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 pride and and arrogance and so you can see uh that there there is something wrong with 
uh, uh, our messaging in terms of receiving what God has said uh, he wants to do and so now we have uh, chaos all around us and so we are expecting Christ to come back and to set things right and to put things in order and this is the message today at the second advent when uh, uh, as we look for Christ's return that we're looking for justice all of us have experienced injustice we've uh, been uh, uh, victims if you will of wrongdoing and 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 all manner of things and so how do we uh, 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 get these things right and sometimes uh, 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 we we are not able to to right the wrongs if you will but God is able and what God is saying here I'm going to do it and that's the message we want to be able to take from this the second outline is entitled praise for justice uh, again from Isaiah chapter 61 we're looking at now verses 10 and 11 I delight greatly in the Lord my soul rejoices in my God for he has clothed me uh, with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels verse 11 for as the soil makes the sprout uh, come up and the garden causes seeds to grow so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise sp uh, spring up before all nations that that is going to be something to behold that 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 we are going to be able to praise God the the prophet here is is looking uh, down the line to see uh, that God has clothed uh, uh, me with garments of salvation we keep talking about this word salvation uh, and it essentially delivers us from the uh, penalty and power of sin but ultimately when the Lord comes back we will be delivered from the presence of sin uh, we are all victims of the presence of sin even though we are not engaged in it and we're still affected by it because we're in its presence but when we're looking at the Lord's return, we're looking for garments that are not contaminated. We're looking for an environment, if you will. We're looking for a praise that is going to be far exceed the praise that we have now. And the, 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 uh, 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 the prophet here is rejoicing here. Uh, he says, my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. You know what? I thank God that he has started the process in my life of salvation. You ought to be praising God for the fact that you are saved today, that you have been sanctified, that you've been set apart for the purposes of God. And that should inspire you and motivate you to look forward to the to the time when we won't have to deal with any more sin, when we won't have to deal with uh, any more heartache, and we won't have to deal with any more injustice, and so uh, 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 we won't have to deal with any more lies and, and all of these things that, that affect us today. But I thank God that I have my war clothes on. I thank God that the garments that 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 uh, of salvation are on me uh, now and I thank God that they are on you and so we can praise God now and we can look ahead but what God is saying here through this prophet that what he's going to do is going to spring up before all nations and I, I praise God for that today because uh, and, and that should be a part of our messaging today is to make sure that we deliver a message that is inclusive because that is what the Lord wants to do so the result of this personal internalization was an outward exp expression of personal praise this prophet Isaiah rejoiced for the redeemed remnant because God has clothed them in salvation and righteousness. So what do we mean about this righteousness? Uh, I would encourage you to read Psalm 32, but essentially it just means that we are in right standing with God through Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans chapter 5 is an excellent book to study concerning that right standing or that righteousness and that we have 
peace with God. I am at peace today uh, in this world that is full of chaos. I believe that God is in control. I believe that God's promises have not been snuffed out by anything uh, that is contaminated. And we as a people of God as never before, we must know what the promises of God are all about. We need to know how we are involved uh, as the people of God in the promises of God. We ought to be like this prophet was trying to encourage Judah to do was to look ahead. Uh, not at so much the circumstances, but you know what? I am looking to what the law said he would do. And so that is the focus today of our lesson today. But the question here, what evidence is there that would suggest that the purposes of our being clothed in righteousness are not being fully demonstrated. So you can look at your own life and you can see where you are. You can see what fruit uh, is manifested uh, in your life. But always understand this, that we tend to act out what we understand. Uh, we tend to uh, 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 be the characters of our interpretation of Scripture. So if we don't understand the expectations of God, and we don't understand uh, the messages of God, then we're least likely to, uh, to implement them. But we must come to a place as people of God. The character of God has never changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament, whether we're talking about uh, the Jew, the Greek, uh, the barbarian, the Scythian, the free, the bond, uh, the slave. It doesn't matter. God's character has not changed. And we, the people of God, the representatives of God, have to be those vehicles that, that we understand the scripture and we are now incorporating or we have taken the passages of the God's word off of the pages and that we are incorporating these things into our very lives. These are the things that God is expecting of us. Salvation should produce fruit from your life. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit is ruling and governing in your life, there should be fruit of that relationship. And that should be a fruit between you and God. In other words, there should be peace and there should be peace and there should be unity amongst our brothers and sisters. Uh, we have no reason to be destroying one another. God told us before a sign was ever made that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as uh, uh, as yourself. We have been told that uh, that that uh, while we were yet in sin, Jesus died for the ungodly. God was the one that told us. Uh, that uh, because he loved us that he uh, sent his only begotten son we've had that messages uh, that message from John 3:16 for time and, and beyond our uh, understanding we have been told uh, 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 that that God wants us to love one another and so and God wants us to love him uh, to be the recipients of his love and then to transmit that love to our fellow man. And, and so Judah is paying a just penalty for her deeds. Israel has suffered uh, greatly for her uh, 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 actions. And so this is what the lesson is telling us today. What goes around comes around. If we're going to live a disobedient life before God, we're going to reap the benefits uh, of that but it doesn't have to be that way and so uh, I hope that the scriptures that we have given you will help uh, help us understand God's expectation and even as we look at uh, uh, Israel's history if it didn't work out for God's own covenant people what makes you think is going to work out for you if we're going to hate one another how do you think that's going to fare in our relationship with God? Uh, if we are going to not forgive one another, how do you think that is going to affect our prayer lives? And so we need to get over the hump, if you will, and do the things that God have called for us to do because we are expecting him uh, to come. We're expecting Christ at his second advent. Uh, and so we are eagerly, I believe Romans chapter uh, 8 talks about that we are eagerly awaiting a Savior from heaven. 
And so these are the promises of God. Uh, but our last outline talks about a promised transformation. This is taken from Isaiah chapter 62, uh, verses 2 through 4a. And I want to read this from the NIV translation. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate. This is something to look forward to. But you know, Israel uh, uh, and these nations, uh, essentially in the King James Version, is talking about the Gentiles, what the world is going to be able to see. But Israel had complained that uh, God had not fulfilled his promises to them. So God responded to their complaint by expressing uh, his will to reestablish her righteousness and salvation, uh, not for them only, but for and in full view of all nations and their leaders. You know, uh, we shouldn't count God's promises out. Uh, rather, we are talking about Jews, whether we're talking about Gentiles. And keep in mind, it was always God's intent for Israel uh, when he rescued them from Egyptian bondage for them to be evangelists, if you will, in the Canaanite land, the promised land where he expected to uh, uh, take them. Uh, God expected them to exemplify the Mosaic law uh, uh, before the world. Uh, but they were not able to do that. And so we want to think about as the people of God, uh, we don't have to worry so much about uh, Jew and Gentile, but we do have to worry about the fact that we're calling on the name of the Lord and we're saying that we're saved through the cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are that seed. Uh, we are that promise. We are that redeemed of the Lord. And so God's expectation uh, uh, through this complaint uh, through Israel that uh, they felt like God was not doing what he said he would do and so but you know that's that's our mindset sometimes when we think God is not answering us or he's not responding then uh, we we feel like we don't have to abide by uh, the covenant terms but we still have to abide by the covenant terms and keep in mind, as I said to you earlier from uh, Psalm uh, 24, uh, we belong to God. We are passengers in his car. And he has called on us to live in this world a certain way. So the fullness of this restored relationship with the Lord is reflected by the nations uh, and the, the land's new names. So the nation would no longer be called forsaken, um, nor the land desolate. So instead of the nation being known as uh, Hephzibah, Hephzibah uh, in other words, God is saying, you're going to, it means my delight is in her. And the land no longer desolate, uh, but Beulah is what God is saying here that they're going to be caught up. in other words they're going to be married so the returning exiles will be married to the land in a permanent and fruitful relationship like that of a blessed marriage and that's something to know that 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 we are in such a covenant with the Lord we are his uh, a bride if you will the church uh, we are his people we are his redeemed people and we should act like that uh, we should conduct ourselves uh, like the people of God. This is the expectation. So uh, uh, we are being brought to that realization to the, in, in, the, in the fullness uh, in this text. And so what God is saying here uh, through this prophet that I'm going to fulfill the promises that I made to you. I'm going to keep the covenant terms which is to bring you to where I want you to be. And, and, and even as we look for Christ to come, uh, but one of the things that the Holy Spirit is doing with us and in us uh, uh, is taking us deeper into the truth, taking us into more 
revealed truth, taking us into more understanding, a deeper understanding. Uh, you know, when I was uh, uh, meditating this morning, I will share this with you as we prepare to close. Uh, I did not, as an unsaved individual, I did not understand life, the term life. I did not know what it meant other than the fact that I had it and then I lived it on my own terms. But one of the things that God did with me and that we uh, need to understand and I hope that you do is that life has to be lived on God's terms. It's a gift from Him. And so I had to be taught how to live. I had to be taught uh, what life was all about. And one of the things that I learned about life, it was not about me. I had to learn that, that it was about God, that God had uh, recreated uh, me, if you will, or transformed me to live in a way that pleased him and less of myself. And so this is what Judah had to learn. Uh, they did everything selfish that they could do to please themselves. And it caused them to wind up in captivity. And many times when we don't think about God, we end up in places where we should not be. We end up in circumstances where we should not be. And these are not the places where God wants us to come. But God will use those circumstances to bring us closer to him. And that's what has happened to Judah. God has used their circumstances that he allowed to happen. Uh, though they uh, f uh, forsook him and, and, and what he told them to do, God is saying here, I'm not going to forsake you. You still belong to me. I'm still going to fulfill my promises that I made to you. So the future for the people of God is extremely bright, even though the days may seem dark. We have a future. God is going to ultimately bring us into his presence. God is going to ultimately bring us into the place where no sin reigns at all. God is going to ultimately bring us uh, uh, into the place that he has long desired for us to come as the people of God where we will dwell with one another in a relationship that we just cannot comprehend at this time but what I do know and what I will share with you is that we are well on our way as any passenger would in the back seat of a car who is a child may not understand where his parent is taking them but what we do know is that there is somebody else behind the wheel of that car. What we do know, we're not driving that car. What we do know, we are not in that driver's seat. So the I in this text is God. He is in that driver's seat. And he is bringing us to the place that he wants us to come. So enjoy the ride. Enjoy the faith in the one who has the wheel. Uh, be confident that the one who is driving the vehicle, who is bringing us, has never lost a case. He has never lost his way. He has never made a wrong turn. He is bringing us exactly to where he wants us to be. So we pray that God will continue to bless us and keep us. Just know that I love you and that we are praying that God will continue to make his face to shine upon us and to grant us peace. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.